Hey, howdy, hey. We're going into portrait mode. I see a bunch of people are already joining. Ed, my man, come on down, come on down. I'm Joshua Lysak, obviously. Ed and I today are going to be talking about the best way to tweet it. We are going to have some pretty, uh, pretty exciting stuff in store for you today. But first, a lot of people are asking, uh, best way to tweet it. Um, question, how is this any different, this new program you're doing with Ed, how is it any different from the best way to say it or any of Ed's like Ed, uh, engagement guides and any of that stuff? Well, I'll tell you what works for the best way to say it is the system. A lot of people have bought it. We've got like 700 sales. It's been, it's been pretty crazy. The best way to say it is a system that anyone can use for writing copy from anything from blog posts to books. The best way to tweet it is the world's first and still only as far as I'm aware workflow workflow for writing a tweet. Basically, you ask yourself, okay, what do I want to get out of this tweet? I'm about to pop out there right now. You say, okay, do I want to create engagement? Do I want to build authority, credibility in my legend? What do I want? Do I want to drive traffic off Twitter? Should I, oh, uh, make some sales, get some cash, make some money? See so what you do, you follow the best way to tweet it workflow that Ed and I have built. That's really what this program is. It's not a bunch of random tips, generic advice, anything like that. So in the workflow, you ask yourself what you want out of the tweet. Most people fail at copy game because there's not a lot of, um, okay, what should I actually be getting out of what it is I'm putting out there? So the point of the workflow is you decide what the purpose of the tweet is, what you want to get out of it. And then from there, you've got multiple options. Ed and I put our brains together and our uh, background, uh, mine in copy and ghostwriting and his in uh, Twitter engagement, and you've got a crap ton of different options. So you could drive engagement and make a sale. You could build authority and get people off of Twitter to drive traffic there. So you see what I mean here? What the workflow, the best way to tweet it workflow allows you to do, enables you to do, is to uh, to get the results uh, that, you're, uh, that you're looking for. Uh, I know Ed's going to be coming up here in just a second, waiting for him to get on, as is everyone else. There's quite a few of you joining right now. Uh, I've invited everybody to join. I'm just going to check and make sure Ed's here. Ed, where are you at? Come on down, Ed. Uh, he's going to be joining me in just a second to uh, to chat about it. We've got quite a few people here. Let's see where Ed's at. Oh, hey, Ed is joined. Yes, yes. Okay, Ed, make sure you can uh, ask to join here. We'll get you right on. I've invited everybody to join. Um, it'll be coming up here in just uh, just one second. But the point of the workflow, as Ed and I will about, be about to tell you, he's coming right on, is to generate thousands of tweets, literally thousands of tweets. We ran the numbers, the workflow, almost without thinking twice. Okay, you got to think maybe two or three times. But uh, it'll allow you to pump out thousands of tweets, literally thousands of tweets. There's nothing like it. It is the first Twitter system. All right, any second now, Ed's gonna be uh, gonna be coming on here. I see he's just joined. Ed has asked to join. Let's see, uh, he'll be on in just a second. I'm gonna hit uh, Ed guest list. Ed'll be joining us. Jeff, how's it going, Ed? I sure can. All right, Ed has just joined. Can everybody hear Ed? Yay or nay? Can you hear me okay, Ed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, yeah, I'm good. I'm here. You, I can hear you. Uh, I had some headphones on. I thought they were gonna work. My um, the hell are they called? Bluetooth headphones. They didn't do anything. So. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Adam Townsend says he can't hear you. Can anyone else? Oh, yes. People are now saying that they can hear us both. That's great, Ed. Well, I was just uh, just uh, telling everybody, Ed, about the best way to tweet it workflow because I a lot of people have been asking me. Joshua, how's the best way to tweet it different from best way to say it or Ed's Twitter engagement, guys? Like, I bought, I bought both of your stuff. Why do I need the best way to tweet it? And I was talking about the workflow that is essentially the foundation of the system. Basically, you ask yourself what you want to get out of the tweet, and then you follow our workflow step by step, and it gives you thousands upon thousands of potential tweets. Yeah, uh, it, it's a really interesting idea. I really liked it because I think one of the most difficult things about teaching writing is kind of how to systematize it because it's very much an art along with a science. But I think more art, I mean, like, you know, I can tell you mechanics, et cetera, but I can't tell you kind of what's going to hit, what's not going to hit and what topics to, to tackle to, to do that. So what we tried to do is create 
a flow like okay you want to get engagement well here are some engaging on Disney and here's how to talk about them in ways that'll work here are some things that'll generate sales okay so we have these sales uh you want to drive people through so they will purchase and there's a different way to to do that than there is if you're just reaching for engagement and one of the things that i think people don't understand is that is a twitter uh certainly at least less than other platforms does you know cares or they don't care whether you drive a person on or off. They just people just think this uh, because they don't really have a concept of how to drive people to click on an icon, and they don't understand user expectation, whatever, right? But w- what I have discovered is that when you say seeing things a certain way, when you put things out a certain way, people are more likely to click, and then when they click through, I mean, however your copy is written. Is, is up to you that's going to do that. But if you to get them to see it through Twitter is, is certainly a, um, a skill and it has to be done with intent. And that's what we have. We focus on with the workflow. Are you trying to get people to drop through? Are you trying to generate engagement? I mean, ideally everything you put together would just fly off the handle. That is an unlikely scenario. So instead what we want to do is try to act with intention for a certain task. Hmm. There you go. There you go. Several people have have, have asked uh, me, and and I think you also, guys. Is this just another one of those Twitter growth programs? I have like ten of those. First of all, it's not because it is in fact a tweet-sized persuasion system <laughs> that that leverages your expertise in creating engagement, building a, a tribe of buyers, not just followers, but buyers, having a big buyers list that you build off of a Twitter, and my expertise in in persuasive writing. And you've you've mentioned in uh, in the video that's on the sales page, the, the sign up page, that you've bought everybody else's program, everyone's Twitter engagement guide, and so you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. The, how this is different. Yeah, I spend. Uh, you know, anytime I see someone with a guide out, I, I buy them first and foremost because I like to see uh, what other people have discovered. And if they have discovered something that I haven't discovered, I want to go learn it. I have I have zero ego about this. I recognize very much that I'm a student and the only way I can continue to develop is by remaining in that role and always trying to learn. The other part of it, the other motivation is I, I would like to see if someone's figured out something that I don't know. And generally speaking, uh, first, th- there's almost, I mean, there, th- there's like one God uh, by someone that has a, a comparable following but for the most part no one has as many followers and that tells me uh, they don't have as much, much engagement on followers because one could attribute my follower following count to like other sources so let's let's talk about like engagement whatever rate of growth etc uh i haven't found anyone that has that and the reason why is because i don't i don't think they understand what we're going to be talking but we talk about in the best way to tweet it which is how to put together things the not to do list that's something that i don't have in any of my gods is what not to do and and what we find what i always say is if you focus on not making mistakes just by virtue of what's left over you should have something really useful and make some great progress so we we talk about the big mistakes you can make we we demonstrate live us writing and kind of how my brain works when i'm putting together tweets and concepts and ideas and see what hits and what doesn't hit this is another thing that's missing at the end of the day this is a product by someone who knows what they're doing and you can look and see that in every aspect of their presence yeah and that's a that's a good point because one of the things that we are among among many things that are inside the best way to tweet that's not anywhere else is the concept of ghost traffic which is ironic coming from a ghost writer, a ghost publisher, a ghost marketer, AKA me. The idea of ghost traffic is creating an income off of Twitter, not simply from people who are engaging with your tweets. So one of the things we teach inside the program is how to create high ticket clients through Twitter, through the DMs, through engaging with people who may not actually make their presence known. Yeah, you know, maybe the tweet only got five likes, but one of them was a $25,000 client and they never even replied to the tweet. So then how do you scoop up that potential business for your actual business, not to sell your Twitter growth guide? <laughs> That's the new pyramid scheme, right? Is, is buying a Twitter growth guide and then creating another one. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, it, it's and, and here's the thing, you know, I, I don't think it's it's anything malicious or anything like that. I just I think people misunderstand or they don't have the knowledge one or the other either they don't know or they don't understand uh, that it's it's not I, I maintain that it's not particularly difficult uh, to get to you know 10 or 20,000 followers just by virtue of how many people on the platform each year more and more people come and and they improve in how they show uh, your stuff to other people the the trick is to continue that growth and to do something with it i mean are we are we just coming on to be popular are we coming on with to, to share a message are we coming on to make some money i mean what what is the goal and when you have a goal for growth, then you can have a strategy. If you're just kind of popping on the talk shop and, and interacting, I mean, you may grow by accident, sure. But when you try, it's a lot more likely that things are going to happen and, and good things that align with your goal. You know, you don't you know, you don't need 131,000 followers to make uh, a, a living to even make any money. But you do need a strategy. if You only have, one, you know, 1,310 followers. You need some type of writing strategy to express yourself best and ultimately to to recruit. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, a lot of people who, who actually inspired us to create this this uh, program together, Ed, had talked about the fact that like they know they need to be tweeting. They know to be, they need to be engaging and quote tweeting and replying and engaging with blue checks and all that. But they're like, I don't know what to tweet or how that's actually going to make this worth my while. And from a, from a business perspective. And so we thought, well, the workflow will save an incredible amount of time. And not only that, but we recorded sessions where people can look over our shoulder as we compose and edit tweets in real time. That's one of the things that the best way to say it offered that no one had ever seen before is actual live editing sessions to see the system at work. Um, t tell, tell us about that, Ed. What, what, was, uh, what were some surprising lessons you took away from our look over the shoulder tweet writing and editing sessions? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, well, first, I, I guess I'll just talk about my experiences and I'm sure a, a natural lesson will pop up here or there. So th that was probably the first time I'd ever been like, oh, okay, let, let's compose for people to watch. Because I've, I've done like composition sessions. Uh, what are we doing? And they've been for being effective. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about Banny in, in a moment. I'm actually a big, big fan of, of that topic. And, and what I say might surprise people, may not. But um, in terms of writing, on on kind of cue demand well well what you see is that is where i pulled the tweets from the material from and it really are my, my thoughts my my life and in doing so i then i go categorize things in my life you know i think one was about boxing another was about philosophy and math and, and another was was a crackhead humor uh joke designed for for sales but these are all things from from my life and my my way of thinking. So all I did was categorize my thinking. And then I was like, okay, let me come up with this idea, that idea, this is the one idea I came up with because I had just been watching fights and a Marvin Hagler fight in particular. And I was like, okay, let me let me take a lesson from this and, and put it out there because my mind is churned towards let's deliver value because that you know that's all you should be using a platform for in general. That's my perspective. Anyhow, you know, some disagree, but if you're using it for value and you start to see how everything you experience is valued, then it becomes very simple to, to, to slice things up and really write and create on demand. You don't have to create a full fledged essay. You know, I, I understand the difficulty for writing like long form content, but Twitter really lets you just sput, 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 sput out thoughts. Right. And then you're like, OK, cool. Some catch, some don't. Um, but then you start learning how to present those thoughts in the best way. And that that's what I took from that. Uh, I was I was surprised at how much editing I think I do naturally uh, because because there's one thing we're just writing you're like okay I know that's going to hit on that's not let me move that word around whatever but during the workflow process there were some things where I was like oh wow okay I wouldn't have said it that way or I think I changed around something you said as well on your tweets and it's interesting seeing that and, and I talk about some of those things in general when they're like the mistakes you know when you, you avoid these things they're not really they're, you're going to do better but yeah, I, I think I think the the big takeaway to sum that up was the amount of of skills that you just pick up over time, and then I go, okay, let me 
put that back in it to a let me break that down into a system for other people to take and kind of go chop 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 and that was cool to see and and if you just practice you get better at it that's right and and other modules inside the program focus on improving your engagement optimizing for persuasion and there's a few different ways that we we teach that there is of course the best way to ruin tweets, which are the top four mistakes Ed, that you see in uh, up and comers out here. Uh, we've got a, a, a super exciting module called win the click, win the click. The best way to get traffic from Twitter is the, by far the longest in the program. You look at all the different ways that you found that work to get traffic off of Twitter, to look at articles, podcasts, videos you put out there. Um, you know, without getting your, uh, uh, without getting anything you're linking to dropped down on uh, Twitter's algorithm. So you've got some, some clever ways to get engagement and clicks. Yeah. And, and that's cool. And speaking of which, I want to, I want to, since it, it, it comes up, uh, I want to, want to talk about, uh, avoiding being banned though, that we don't discuss that in the God because it, it it's, we, act, we, we, we do it. We do it in one, in we, one part actually. Oh, we do actually. Well, okay. So, so here's how you can avoid getting banned. And and I've I, this is not just lessons for me. Uh, I, I picked up quite a bit watching uh, Mike Cernovic, and yes. and seeing how that guy has not been banned or blocked. And I asked him about this one day, and then between that and sorting some other things out. So, so here's the best way to avoid being banned. Just here's some, here's some information. Uh, one. Never ever, if you're gonna talk crap on anybody, just don't add them. Unless you're you're trying to poke the bear. And if you do poke the bear, uh, make sure you don't insult anything innately characteristic about them, i.e., things that can't be changed. That is almost certainly going to to strike a flag. You can you can insult the idea, but the person, okay, you're gonna you run into that. And if you if you if you do bring up the person, then then you gotta hit edits and asterisks and you know you gotta be you gotta sense you gotta you gotta think of it like this once you think of it like this uh if you tell a dirty joke right that could be offensive uh and you, you tell it on a crowd of people some people are going to be unhappy right but for the most part they can't do anything to you unless like and they're not going to be compelled to unless you're like hey guess what something 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 n words and and all of a sudden be like whoa 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 wait okay and then we go one level further if you walk up to somebody and you start telling them the joke directly now even if the joke is tamer uh, they're gonna have some grounds to kind of report and blast you, and then when you when you poke that enough, poke that enough, and you make enough enemies, uh, the algorithm is gonna not even the algorithm at this point. You're gonna get on Twitter's like personal radar, and that's really the last place you want to be, uh, because because I've looked at accounts that that are are politically right leaning that have not been snagged and have been snagged, in particular two accounts coming to mind, uh, Cernovic and Adams are both very right and they, they have not, you know, so much as whiffed a band. And you look at a lot of what they do. They, they don't do anything like what I'm, <laughs> nothing. There's, there's no attacks. There's, they, they don't, I mean, even if they argue with someone, it's a, now, now Mike used to argue with people, but, but they, they gotten tough on that. Uh, I remember when he was harassing, what the hell is his name? Uh, the, 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 the dude from the weed movie, um, not not Jonas Hill, but his partner uh, Seth Rogen. He was he was really he was fucking with Seth bad. Um, <laughs> but uh, but on the flip side, you know, when when back in the uh, what the hell is his name, the Milo days, when he was messing with uh, the black chick from from the Ghostbuster movies, uh, yeah, man, they they eventually you know they they crack down and they they keep cracking. So uh, if if you have if you have been if you follow those rules are good. Now if, if you if you do get snagged. Uh, I saw, I've seen some accounts come back, two notable ones, Jesse Kelly and AJ Cortez, uh, because they have, they have some friends in high places. And if you have those friends, Leslie Jones, that's your name. Yeah. If you have some friends in high places, uh, and, and your, and your mistake wasn't too egregious, uh, someone's going to be looking out for you. You, you, know, you got to know how to reach those people. So, so it always helps to have a, a number or two in your phone that is no more than one degree of separation away from someone who can do something about this decision, 
but that that that's again, you know, that that's a that's actually a really fun thing I should, should write about and talk about. But the the TLDR make it hard to get suspended and make it easy to come back if you do. And I find that people who get snipped have have made a mistake on either one of those fronts. They either have not recognized their allies and made them and and you know nurtured those relationships, or they um. They, they went and decided to poke that bear a little too hard or in the wrong way. So I, I hope that that sums up what, I, what I've what i learned about, about Block and Watch. And, and I got a 12-hour ban, and I know exactly what what, what got me. Oh, you know, CNN, they, they got some leverage. You got to get those people. Somebody in Fox knows you, I hope. And they would. <laughs> so but there's the thing. The more powerful your enemies, the more powerful your allies have to be. And and that is that is a... a um, Really, the, the the kind of best bet I I, got, I would have for that. Now, I, I bet I I bet you know knowing what that kind of reach you have, I, I bet there's somebody that could bring you back. You you you, you know you I'm, I'm not I don't think you got to grease palms or nothing, but but somebody somebody up there knows who you are, and we're like okay, we want to want to bring them back and and lean on them. Uh, but 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 I've never had to to play in that arena. I've I've seen other people play in that arena and 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 those but but because kelly was being a bit of a of an a-hole but he they 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 let him come back man and and he went and leaned on him and, and they snipped him when he showed up and now he's back and we'll we'll see uh but the, that is that's the best i have on that because i'm not like I, i'm only i got a, i got a 12 hour band once Cause I, you know, I, 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 I used the P word with some chick who was harassing me and, and they, and she, they were reporting, reporting, reporting. They had put me on the radar, went to law on the Twitter one day. It was like, Oh, you've got a 12 hour suspension and we're not going to start it until you delete that tweet. And I'm like, y'all could have deleted that shit overnight. Like, uh, <laughs> Oh man. So there we go. Well, well that is unfortunate the, the see at that point. Yeah. I mean, uh, they are the arbiter. Uh, that 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 is unfortunate. We we still feel you in spirit, Carpray, and I'm happy you always check in on the periscopes. So so much much love to that man. Much much love. But uh, that is that's all I have to offer on the band front. <laughs> and that's the the best way to not get canceled. <laughs> uh, back to uh, the best way to tweet it, Ed. What uh, brought a lot of people out here um, uh, today? There's been a, a few DMs I've been getting, like, "Oh, Joshua, you know, I, I really want to jump on this new program with uh, you and, and Ed." Best way to tweet it at some point here, you know, maybe in a, in a few weeks, few months, get a bonus, whatever. But the price goes up on Sunday, does it not? From 129 US dollars to 199, and we've got a couple of special bonuses for people who buy it this weekend. The best way to make a thousand bucks on Twitter and the best way to get your first or next thousand followers. The, the best way to make a thousand bucks on Twitter was really fun. And because we talked about different ways that you can stack up an income through uh, low priced information products to even a $500 service, a thousand dollar service and how to create those opportunities. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of ways to, to do this. I think, uh, I think one of the limitations that people have is they don't fundamentally understand how money is made. Like, like, because once you get that, then it's like, oh, I can see how to make my life. I can see how to make it anywhere. You know, you put me in the jungle. I'll, I'll set up a set up a business. You know, and selling trees, <laughs> like, like, oh, you know, I'll sell water to wells. Like, like that old um, uh, Jay Z's got a layer where he where he talks about. I, th I think he says some uh, he was selling soul to a slug, water to a well. I'm a hustler or something like that, right? Yeah, and you figure why you why you kind of figure out the principles? You're like, oh, I can do that anywhere, uh, and that's kind of what we discuss. But the 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 specifics of porting that to Twitter, but in general, how to prime your mind to see opportunity and make them happen in a way that will be much easier to facilitate on Twitter than other places. Cause, cause that's where we're talking about Twitter, you know? That's right. It's basically a, it, Twitter is a, is a bazaar. It's a, it's a marketplace. It's a place to show up and sell your wares. Well, how do you sell what people are going to buy? More importantly, when you go on Twitter, the marketplace of Twitter, how do you sell what people are already buying? 
and communicate that you are the best person to buy that from. That's what the bonus, the expiring bonus, the best way to make a thousand bucks on Twitter uh, goes away Sunday night, along with best way to get your first uh, or next thousand followers. Something I personally know a little bit about because when I started and I launched the best way to say it, I had, I think, fewer than 3,000 followers. I'm almost at 7,000. That was just a couple months ago. So I'm averaging more than 1,000 new followers um, a month at, <laughs> at, at this rate. Um, yeah. We talked about some of the things to do to get noticed by people who can accrue you followers. Yeah. Which, you know, it, it's, it's very much, well, okay, so like, why do I love Twitter? Uh, my brain just naturally works this way as, a, as an extroverted person. But there is a... The, it's very much a network. I mean, in fact, that's all it is. It's just a bunch of networks. I mean, people forget the, the only reason why Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, any of that are things is because other people just show up. All they did was, was create a place for you to connect. And some people said, this is where I want to go and connect, which is why on another note, why like the next social media platform, if there ever is one, uh, has to understand that fundamentally, but that's a different argument. But uh, people, you know, show up and they want to meet other people, follow people. And the best way to do this is, is to art rather than make other people follow you, deliver some value, you know, entertain them, educate them, solve the problems, inspire them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, make people want to be there with you. And when you and however you do that is likely going to be the best way for you to accumulate some dollars and, and make your time on this platform profitable. There you go. There you go. And for people who are like, okay, I think I want to check this out. If there's if there's one reason and one reason alone that that uh, or people are jumping on the best way to tweet it, it's that workflow we talked about at the beginning. Basically, starting with the, tweeting with the end in mind. What do I want from what I'm about to put out there into the world, into the marketplace? And there's only four reasons that you would want to tweet if you want to get serious about using the marketplace that is Twitter, the bazaar that is marketplace, or the bazaar that is Twitter, and that you're going to drive engagement, you're going to build authority. You're going to make sales or you're going to drive traffic. If you're not doing one of those four things, you're doing it wrong. The workflow outsources from your brain and racking your brain what you should tweet about to accomplish one or more of those four purposes at once. The workflow is it's where it's at. And it's even a one page printable that you all can literally print off and stick next to your place where you schedule out your tweets and you can pump out literally thousands of tweets. That is not even an exaggeration. We, we ran the numbers, didn't we, Ed? Yeah, uh, somewhat. I came with came with some some. It was like the permutation we, formula of like, wow, there's a this is in the thousands for sure. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll definitely uh, solve the issue, the problem that I've encountered a lot of times mentoring people and working with them, which is how do I come up with something to tweet about? And so this is going to make that process much easier. Like just much easier just you, you go into it and you, you should be able to sit down and come up with a bunch of different things to accomplish a bunch of different tasks and eventually here's the cool part if you figure it out soon enough you won't need the workflow you'll just be able to sit down and write and come up with stuff that's the whole idea right learn the, learn the moves master moves then forget the moves right that's uh yeah. how, how they talk about martial arts yeah, it's a system that the more you use it, the more it become, the more you become it. And then the system now is uh, is who you are. So if if we were to kind of have the uh, the unabridged version of the title of this program, and there's it, there's about ten hours worth of content in there for everybody. Best way to tweet it. It's more so the best way to know exactly what to tweet about, so that you can create engagement, build authority, win clicks off Twitter, drive traffic, and make sales. That's really what this is. And if you want the best way to know how to do that, get the best way to tweet it this weekend by Ed Lattimore and myself, 129 bucks, Sunday night Eastern goes up to 199 and those bonuses expire. Any parting words for our friends here stuck with us, Ed? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I miss Carpe too. He, he, he gave me a lot of, a lot of playing bounce and really, really helped me grow when he was around. So, and I know that's not, not related to the, um, to the pitch, man, but 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 now I got I got love for that guy. I wish I wish you know the, the the Twitter CEOs didn't have a beef with him. Certainly a value add and an interesting perspective. But other than that, I hope that you check it out. And if you don't check it out, you know you'll you'll still see me popping out value and helping people out 
on the platform and everything like that. So just so you know, while while there is a, a very obvious, and I don't lie about this commercial aspect, I'd love to just be here and talk to and chat and help people out. You know, the bond is the secondary part for me. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And thanks for uh, at Comperdonctum for engaging with us here in Periscope. I see so, at Wardy Smarty just said, I didn't need the pitch. I'm going to buy anyway. I just wanted to attend the party. Well, this party is uh, I'm happy to be happy happy as they here. say, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Awesome. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thanks, uh, Ed. No problem.